Hello everyone, uh, this is Mahesh Nathu and I have with me uh, Tanu Rangarajan. Uh, welcome to the Compute Express Link uh, update uh, session today. I'm glad you can join us and uh, we'll go over uh, some of the uh, basic concepts about what Compute Express Link is, what the roadmap looks like, and uh, then Tanu will talk to some of the changes, uh, the way the changes uh, UEFI, ACPI, and some of the other standards. So uh, if you have questions, you can post them online, and we'll try to answer them uh, at the end of the session. So with that, uh, let's begin. So uh, again, uh, just to uh, reiterate, uh, Tanu uh, is a principal engineer from ARM, and he's with me today. Uh, and he'll be going over the second half of the session. Uh, I'm Mahesh Nathu. I work uh, at Intel uh, in the data platform group, and I'm also the co-chair of uh, Sixer Consortium uh, Software Working Group. Uh, today's agenda is going to be, uh, like I mentioned, we'll go over what CXL is, provide some uh, overall introduction, talk about uh, the roadmap, and then uh, today's uh, the deep dive topic will be getting into the implications to UEFI and ACPI uh, of uh, CXL, and we'll end with uh, a summary and call to action. So. Uh, CXL has been around for more than about uh, uh, eight or nine months, right? So not a lot of people have familiar with that. So let me just go over what it is, right? So CXL or the Compute Express Link is a new uh, industry standard uh, that provides uh, high bandwidth and low latency coherent interconnect, right? Low latency being uh, more of a focus area than uh, everything else. There are a number of high bandwidth uh, interconnects like PCIe that are available. Uh, where CXL differentiates itself is the low latency part and the coherent part. It connects the processor uh, with the accelerators uh, or memory devices, and uh, it essentially helps address uh, a number of usages across many, many work, many, many uh, segments. Uh, AI, ML, HPC, and comms, uh, these segments, uh, to them, uh, heterogeneous processing, where some of the work is done by the host processor, some is done by accelerators, is, is pretty common. Uh, and they also often require memory expansion. So both of these usage models are satisfied by CXL. And what it is, is really a multiplexing of three protocols over what is a familiar PCIe physical layer. So uh, think of it as uh, essentially PCIe connection a physical layer, and on that, there's three separate protocols that are multiplex dynamically, meaning all three can flow at the same time, and the packets are sent right on the same physical path, interchange one after another. So the first one that's of most interest is CXL.io, for us at least here. Uh, it basically provides uh, uh, IO semantics, and it is very similar, actually almost same as PCIe. Um, it's essentially taking PCI packets and sending them onto the this multiplex bus, and it's used for enumerating uh, CXL devices and interrupts and other control paths. CXL cache is a sort of a new uh, concept. It provides ability to cache uh, uh, memory across accelerators and processors. They can sh essentially share a same uh, be in the same coherency domain and can manage, right, cache each other's memory. CSL.mem, or memory, provides memory semantics that allows uh, expansion of memory, uh, meaning one can attach a device to CXL uh, to uh, provide extra memory capacity beyond what right, is normally done to, let's say, DDR or bus. So let's get into uh, some of the uh, use models, right? Uh, CXL, uh, if you look at use model, there's three of them that are highlighted here. The type one device that's shown on the very left, an example would be uh, a smart NIC, right? And it is essentially cache coherent with the CPU. Uh, the NIC doesn't have any memory, 
that's exposed to the host as coherent memory, but it has cache and therefore can transfer data back and forth with the processor uh, relatively quickly, right? Versus going over PCIe. The middle picture shows uh, a GPU that uh, is doing uh, sort of dense computation. This uh, GPU is an accelerator and relies on both dot cache and dot mem protocols. Uh, it has its own memory that's shown here a picture, uh, like HPM memory, uh, that it can access quickly, and the CPU can also cache it right in its local cache. Again, it also has a local cache the accelerator, so it can access uh, frequently access data uh, right without having to go to either HBM or the host memory. The last one is memory buffers. Uh, this is uh, essentially used for memory expansion. You can get more bandwidth, you can get more capacity, and uh, it's connected to the, the host processor to CXL bus, and all it does is memory. It has no cache on it. So uh, briefly, uh, where CXL is heading, so 1.1 spec is out now. Uh, there's a link uh, in the presentation that you can go uh, access. Uh, the consortium is actively working on 2.0, uh, which is the next uh, stage, next version of 1.1, with many, many improvements uh, based on the industry feedback. The consortium currently has more than 100 members. Uh, if your company is not a member, uh, right, there's a link here that can help you join. And as part of the, uh, as members can get to contribute and influence uh, the future versions of CXL spec, including the 2.0. Uh, and if you are a member, if you're a company, then there's a lot of activity going on within different work groups. Uh, and so please uh, look at uh, work groups that are of interest to you and consider joining them and contribute to uh, the future of CXL. So with that overview, I want to hand over to Tanu, who is going to go over uh, UEFI and ACPI uh, implications of uh, this emerging standard. Thanks, Mesh. So yeah, as uh, Mahesh just described, uh, as he just mentioned, uh, you know, CXL brings in the notion of a heterogeneous uh, computing system where you have accelerators and processors um, you know, coexisting in the same system. And therefore, uh, from a heterogeneous computing standpoint, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, CXL brings in certain, uh, it, it requires us to do a certain rethinking on the, the NUMA aspects of the system. And most of the focus uh, related to ACP and UEFI that we're going to be talking today uh, are oriented towards this uh, rethink. Uh, in particular, we're going to be talking about hetero memory and hetero processors. Um, and in this space, we'll talk about uh, concepts such as generic initiators um, in a minute. And then also, uh, I think most of you would be familiar with the HMAT uh, table in ACPI, which is the hetero memory attributes table. And CXL uh, introduces uh, a three thing on the HMAT as well to support uh, CXL attached memory. Uh, and then going beyond that, it's also uh, imperative for us to be able to define uh, certain other data structures that are required from a UFI standpoint to uh, discover and configure C CXL devices in a system. And so we'll talk about that as well. And finally, um, we also talk about um, CXL attached memory, which uh, has certain implications in terms of how it should be treated by software. Uh, in particular, you know the way it is going to be used, uh, and the, you know who is going to handle that memory. And to this end, uh, we have a concept called a specific purpose memory that uh, will allow operating systems to recognize CXL attached memory in a system and um, treat that memory accordingly. So yeah, so to get on to the first one, right, the generic initiator. So uh, if you look at a traditional UMA system, you know, things have always been, you know, centered on uh, around CPUs. Uh, well, the HMAT 
was a step away from that traditional view of course because we could have a memory uh, only numa domains but essentially from a uh, from a numa perspective an initiator which is a you know a component that can generate memory requests uh, would always be a cpu in the traditional view and with cxl and you know with accelerators coming into the picture uh, it's becoming imperative that we be able to define uh, other types of numa domains where a non cpu component or entity uh, is the uh, initiator and in that respect uh, we have defined what is known as a generic initiator which is basically uh, such a component that can you know that merits a new mode domain in its own right and so the the concept of generic initiators uh, was introduced in ncp 6.3 and it's um, which is uh, actually something that's already available there so uh, it would be great if Uh, everyone take a look at its base 6.3 spec to know more about the generic initiator the uh, the second thing that uh, we have introduced is the as i mentioned earlier uh, the notion of a specific purpose memory so if you look at a type 2 device a cxl device um, it has typically an accelerator with a processing engine in it uh, and then there could be local memory on that device and arguably that memory is best used for uh, whatever uh, you know the whatever purpose that accelerator is uh, solving at that point or at a given point in time um, now this memory uh, appears to the operating system as regular efi conventional memory you know it is uh, as mahesh explained earlier like it's just regular core and memory it's um, that the host can see and uh, it's write backable uh, it's completely managed by the way so it is basically declared as efi conventional memory but then uh, the recommendation is that it be used preferentially for uh, whatever purpose that acceleration is uh, solving at that point and therefore there is a way um, to embellish or to decorate the memory regions um, belonging to that accelerator and private to it uh, with a uh, special uh, special uh, attribute in ufi which we calling as efi memory sp to speak purpose and this uh, attribute allows uh, such memory regions to be identified um, by an enlightened os and for that os then to be able to manage it but then also be able to allocate that memory only for uh, well preferentially for um, acceleration use cases um the efi memory sp is available in uh, that uh, this attribute is now introduced in ufi 2.8 specification right um i did talk about hman briefly and i did mention that the hman was primarily intended for uh, you know heterogeneous memory systems but also uh, with the uh, the advent of the generic initiators uh, it becomes all the more imperative for us to be able to uh, to be able to describe cxl devices that have accelerators plus memory uh, as in the hmat and there the and the properties the numa properties thereof and to that end uh, what we have defined is something called as the core and device attributes table which is essentially um, the device and its uh, the memory installed on it and potentially any generic initiators on it uh, all of them described in a tabular format for the core firm, firmware to be able to understand the numa properties of that device and the resources behind it and to be able to uh, stitch together the overall hmat table uh, in the long run with the, the, the properties of that device uh, described so provides uh, basic information like you know if there's a whether there's a generic initiator uh, present whether you know if there are internal numa domains you know then what they are and what their properties are you know typically the properties would be the bandwidth and latency associated with memory on the device a memory uh, you know memory regions of memory within the device let me put it that way and then uh, 
recommendations as to whether memory regions those memory regions should be used in the specific purpose way as i described earlier and then also uh, last but not least you know, the uh, the presence of memory site caches uh, for performance improvements as the case may be so if you look at these uh, you know the list of these properties um, you can see that is very reminiscent of the hmat and uh, and rightly so so we you know these properties are just uh, nothing you could think of them as uh, you know a fragment in the hmat the overall hmat table and that fragment essentially describing the endpoint that uh, the c dot pertains to so uh, it's a way for the device to be able to tell core firmware that you know here, here are my properties from a numa standpoint and this is how you would accommodate them into the overall hmat table uh, but more on that so the cdat of course we said that it's a data structure that provides these properties uh, but then there needs to be a way to discover uh, the cdat from a given device and to that end uh, there are at least two mechanisms that uh, have been proposed so far the first one is uh, you know an, an obvious choice actually the option rom uh, so the cdat data structure could be embedded in an option rom and it could be launched during cxl enumeration during the boot phase and then from there on it could be accommodated um, appropriately into the hmat table and there on um the other mechanism is the pci mailbox um, so there it, it could be a mailbox um, there are certain pci seg ecns uh, in flight um, which talk about you know how you can basically creating a mailbox around a pci endpoint and that mailbox then provides the ability to uh, you know provide data that can be uh, queried from the device and supplied by the device and so device vendors are kind of free to choose uh, either option you know recommending either uh, one over the other basically um so now that we have the the whole background set up uh, let's look at the um, typical ufi boot flow uh, where we have on the left hand side we have the uh, pci enumeration uh, with cxl uh, pieces stitched within it so you have cxl discovery happening along with pci and that's that's important because we need to be able to extract the option rom on cxl devices if they do have option roms and that's the path that's uh, marked as one below and essentially what the option roms would then be doing so there's a form to the option roms as well because they not only are hosting the cdat but they also are responsible you know when they are launched they are also responsible for bundling the cdat information into uh, an existing protocol so it is which is there in the ufi spec which is called as the efi adapter info protocol um mark the cdat uh, you know information with a cdat type so that it's a unique type for the adapter info protocol that we need to that we have introduced and then pass that along to the rest of the core firmware drivers to pick up so that's on on the one path on the other path we have a traditional kind of pci based discovery which is the mailbox based uh, discovery of cdat and that's essentially not done by at the enumeration phase but but rather uh, in a distinct you know core driver which we're calling as the hmat fragment driver and it's fragment because as i just described um, a while ago it's essentially picking up hmat fragments right so it's going to pick up the cdat information either from the mailboxes as is illustrated with the code flow path 2 or the uh, adapter info protocol that option rams would have installed that's path 1 and all of this information is then presented to the rest of the system so an api driver could then create an hmat you know the overall hmat table with uh, these pieces are stitched in and also for generic initiators um, you know they are described in as spi uh, objects in the spn you know device objects in spn name space and therefore there are sstt elements as well so and that information is again uh, based on the information that's uh, retrieved from the cdat so that kind of completes the uh, overall initialization flow right with that said so that's basically the uh, configuration piece uh, when you have a cxl or a bunch of cxl endpoints in a system each providing resources that um, must be discovered and accommodated into the uh, into the system as a whole but there's also a fundamental um, 
task that the core firmware has to do and that is cxl discovery um, the cxl discovery of course is not for the firmware it's basically for the uh, os to be able to reach out to the uh, cxl um, to the cxl root complex uh, sorry the cxl uh, so yeah to step back here right? so cxl basically is discovered uh, through a, a traditional pci root complex right and within the root complex you have a cxl host bridge and you have you know the way software would discover that host bridge is um, through information that's supplied through the um, as a firmware and the the cdt provides that information it um, essentially provides uh, it kind of mimics the mcrg table that's used for pci uh, it provides the ability for in the software to be able to pick up uh, information related to where the host bridges are and what resources are, alloc are allocated to it to this end there is a, a a new hardware id that we have described for cxl host bridges uh, which is the spi 016 over there and it also has a compatibility id uh, that matches the pci host bridge so you know you could have pci devices hanging off a cxl host bridge and therefore um, you know in the case of uh, operating systems that are not enlightened um, they can still um, continue to function in a cxl environment and an osc method is also described uh, to allow alignment between os and firmware in this space right um so yeah that's kind of a glimpse of uh, all the you know stuff that is coming along uh, in the ufa and spa worlds to enable cxl um there are ecrs spi and ufa ecrs in flight um, you know that describe uh, these um Uh, these uh, properties or these features that uh, we just talked about um so to please um, take a look at the those ecrs if you are interested um in summary uh, cxl may well change how we compute because there's a whole notion of heterogeneous computing and um, cxl uh, is one way to get there um there is as i already mentioned there is ufi and spi enablement in progress and uh, there has been good progress already registered we've already got um, some of these um, ingredients in place in acpi you know 6.3 and ufi 2.8 as mentioned earlier uh, and with that said you know we just encourage everybody to participate in this industry effort mainly from a cxl standpoint and also from a ufi uh, acpi definition standpoint because it going is going to enable cxl not only cxl but also you know heterogeneous computing in general So thanks everyone yeah Hi everybody uh we're going to move into the live Q&A session right now um so if you do have any questions please go ahead and submit them via the chat box Um the first question that we had is how is CXL different from other interconnect technologies such as PCIe So let me try and answer that right so uh pci express uh is a high bandwidth interconnect right? it doesn't uh, support cache coherency uh, across right the two ends so that's a big major difference and as tanu was talking about right uh, we are moving into an era of heterogeneous processing where the processor and accelerator will work tightly together on a problem right on a workload so to enable such that kind of uh, model right uh, they need to be able to be part of the same cache coherency domain and be able to share data uh, right with a very low latency path and that's where uh, cxl uh, provides a difference the second difference is that uh, pci express you cannot really do memory attachment to pci express any memory attached to pci express would be non coherent right therefore the performance uh, is going to be relatively low uh cxl allows one to attach memory uh to the other end and right, that memory is cache coherent and looks just like your regular memory that's attached to let's say your local ddl so has very very high performance characteristics uh, and provides uh, great uh, expansion capabilities the next question is how is cxl positioned with respect to c6 
Hisanu, do you want to take that one? Because you're familiar with both uh, both of these. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> it's a bit hard to answer that question, really. But um, so both are kind of inter interconnect technologies. Um, they have um, they offer the ability to uh, you know put together a heterogeneous uh, compute si system. The key differences are mainly in the um, in the in the in the in the phi layer and then there is also the um, the ability to uh, i think from cx c6 standpoint uh, you know c6 are, uh, you know allows uh, certain topologies which um, will promote uh, you know peer to peer processing in certain ways um, CXL 2.0 can also provide that. So I think it's hard to kind of answer that and to kind of quantify um, the key differences without, you know, uh, uh, to, to kind of favor one without compromising the other, if you, if you see what I mean. Um, but essentially, it's good to have both um, kind of interconnect technologies uh, together because it kind of promotes uh, an ecosystem for heterogeneous compute and that's i think what we are primarily interested in uh, from a software standpoint and from a ufi standpoint again from an hps standpoint um, there is a lot of synergy that we can leverage uh, in terms of uh, a common you know software framework that can be built into the you know operating systems like linux so uh, there is a hope that we would be able to leverage uh, the same existing frameworks uh, to fulfill the requirements and needs of both uh, technologies at once. Great. Are you aware of EDK2 open source activity related to CXL? So let me take that one, right? So we are, yeah, starting that activity. Uh, the CXL being an open spec, right? Uh, it's no longer just a proprietary, right, sort of Intel-specific uh, capability. So we have started working on, right, uh, driving changes into EDK2, similar to how PCIe was done, right? If you look at PCIe, yeah, because the industry spec, uh, a lot of the enumeration code for PCIe is part of the, the EDK2 uh, right, base package. So that's how I see CXL, right, moving forward, uh, but the work had just begun. At which phase of the boot process does BIOS do CXL enumeration? Is it at the same time that PCIe enumeration is happening? Does the OS have its own enumeration too? So, uh, like we, I think we mentioned earlier, CXL provides cache coherency and memory expansion. And generally, these uh, aspects of the platform are configured very early during the boot time, uh, PEI phase, like, to be specific. So. Uh, the cache and mem enumeration would happen in the PEI phase uh, before memory is established. And uh, the dot .io aspect, right, it's just PCI. So that will happen along with the PCI enumeration. Can you describe how CXL memory is integrated into the host address map? Yeah, I think the the person who asked the question also answered it, right? So, yes, it has to be done really early in the boot before PCI animation in the PI phase. So that is correct. How would legacy software work uh, with CXL? What changes are required towards software enlightenment? Uh, so as we discussed, uh, CXL devices appear as PCI devices with some additional capabilities. So uh, the way we defined it is a legacy PCI software can enumerate a CXL device, can load drivers on it and bind to it. Uh, so some of the basic functionality uh, like that and also the, the memory attachment, right, because of the work that has done for NACPF or HMAT, uh, that sort of works out of the gate, right? However, there's some unique uh, aspects that the CXL brings in, such as the dot .cache. Uh, that require OS enlightenment, and that uh, is where I think some of the discovery uh, right, pieces that uh, Tanu talked about come into handy, that allows OS to discover um, the CXL capabilities and then enable them, right, modify them or control them 
एट वन टाइम When compared to DDR channel mechanism, how much does CXL improve um, things? So there's some important differences between DDR and CXL, right? So DDR is uh, sort of a, 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 a different form factor than CXL, right? CXL is uh, uh, can use PCIe-like form factor. Uh, it's also uh, Uh, running at different frequencies, uh, generally the characteristics are different. Generally, you might see higher latency compared to DDI because DDI is locally attached, but uh, you can get uh, much larger capacity when you attach to CXL. But again, they complement each other. Uh, there was another question asking whether we can have system with zero DRAM, only CXL memory. Yeah, it is possible, but uh, DDI would still be around for a long time, and so I see these two things as complementing. Each other. Is there a concept of the hot plug in CXL? Uh, CXL one dot one that we mentioned doesn't support hot plug. Uh, for future versions of CXL, uh, we are looking into that. Uh, and so again, I would encourage folks that are interested in these kind of wide usage models. To join the consortium and help us uh, build some of these capabilities that this year is valuable into into CXL. Will PCIe devices and CXL devices share the same physical bus? Yes. Yes. So actually, in fact, the, uh, the PCIe slots can also be used to plug in CXL uh, devices. On system that supports CXL, meaning the same slot can either take a CXL device or a PCI device, and that's important because that gives us a solid base ecosystem to right build on top of. Right? Will be will we be able to build a machine that has zero DRAM and only use CXL memory? Architecturally, yes, but uh, I mean. I believe they uh, would be most systems will still continue to have DRAM in addition to having CXL memory. But yeah, in theory, one can build such a machine. Can you comment on system integration test tools and how they impact um, CXL devices? Will they require a new set of tools, or will they not need to because CXL devices will look and feel like they're similar devices? Uh, so let me answer that. And Tanu, if you want to jump in, any of them, just yeah, just uh, jump in. So, uh, sure. Do you want to take this one or a few few next ones, Tanu? Or, or uh, are you are, are, do you want me to keep going? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so let me answer that and answer this one. Yeah, so uh, CXL is built on top of uh, PCIe, so a uh, lot lot of the tools can be leveraged directly. Similar to uh, the UEFI as well as OS, but there's unique features that CXL brings in that are not part of PCIe. So that would definitely require enhancements to existing tools. But we see this as building on top of the current tools in in stuff, right? Uh, starting from scratch. Again, lo there's a lot of investment made in current tools, so I think it is not it's cost prohibitive to try to start from scratch, right? Therefore, uh, building on top of PCIe. Uh, definitely helps. How will the speed compare between memory access CXL versus memory access through the memory ho or the host memory controller? Yeah, Mahesh, I can take this one. <laughs> sure. So I think yeah, as Mahesh uh, explained earlier, right? So this um, the the host memory controller and the the memory behind uh, the The host attached memory, um, you know, we what we call as host attached memory. It's going to be definitely uh, much faster than uh, you know CXL attached memory. But then the whole intention of CXL attached memory is to provide memory expansion. Um, so it has certain other you know latency properties, and that's why we said that we are defining a heterogeneous system, right? Where even memory properties are you know they are not uniform. And so you have CXL attached memory that could be um, slightly slower than host attached memory in you know, a traditional system, 
but uh, it does provide the memory expansion capability which is i think of paramount importance um, growing importance actually i would say in data centers today Will six on memory factor into total memory encryption or en enclave encryption uh, let me take that one yeah i mean six in memory is just regular memory so uh, one would expect that uh, it'll uh, eventually get the same properties that the ddr memory has so in that end to that end yeah i think uh, this is where we are going in the in the long term obviously uh, this is where we need to go but of course uh, uh, would uh, encourage your participation and help in uh, getting there you mentioned that cxl host bridge information is provided to the os in the context of the fact that pcie and cxl share the same physical bus how how is this going to work yeah so the um, there is a specific reason why uh, we want to have the cxl host bridge advertised and that is that there are a, a bunch of cxl specific uh, you know con configuration status registers that uh, sit on 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 that host bridge uh, and they will provide the configuration required uh, for resource allocation behind in the cxl hierarchy right and so the uh you need the host bridge definition so that you can uh, you know you can create memory windows in the host of this map you know to be able to do that now arguably the um, the address window will also include uh, there's a cxl io so the you need basically to also have um, the same legacy pci uh, you know windows memory windows as well as uh, cxl windows uh, cxl specific uh, addresses described by the host bridge cxl specific host bridge so they're going to kind of uh, cxl is kind of building on top of pci is what i would say and therefore it is kind of backward compatible are there any rad features or limitations for cxl how does it work with ler and other error notification and recovery technologies Right. So CXL does have a number of RAS features built in, uh, and I think uh, again it's really hard to <laughs> describe RAS features uh, in uh, two minutes. So I would encourage you to download the CXL 1.1 spec and and right, go through it. That's probably the best answer I can give you. Great. Um, and the, then the last question here: Are there any plans to encrypt encrypt the CXL bus? Right, so CXL 1.1 uh, doesn't have uh, encryption capabilities. Uh, of course, something that uh, the industry as a whole is moving forward. Uh, again, uh, call to action: uh, please join the consortium and help us right build these uh, cool features that you guys are talking about. Right, so we can't just do it alone. We need your help. Great, thank you all for joining us. Um, as a reminder for folks, these slides will be available on the UEFI Forum website. Um, and then you will be able to watch um, this video recording again via the Bright Talk channel or the UEFI Forum YouTube channel. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all. Thanks, Megan.